All right, thanks for joining us today. We are looking at Trapster. He is number 15 from the Fantastic Four set. So this common figure is a great addition to Frightful Four team builds. Uh, we're going to take a look at what he does today. Uh, the keywords I use him with mostly are going to be Frightful Four, of course, but there are some scientist builds you can get out of this, and Sinister Syndicate is pretty useful. He has two traits. The first one is Frightful Four, and it is... Asta La Pasta insect, and it gives him a unique modifier. During your turn, opposing characters modify defense minus one for each attack made by a character with the Frightful Four keyword. That's resolved that turn. Doesn't affect first attack. Uh, so let's see. He is then bumping down the defense on subsequent attacks. So the different ways you can do that, you can have your most unlikely to hit character lead uh, and then drop the defense for your bigger hitters. Or you can lead with your big hitter and then drop that defense on attack number two and then drop it again on attack number three. Uh, notice that it is for each attack made by a character with the Frightful Four keyword. So on the second attack, it would be minus two. And then if your third attacker... Uh, if they're all Frightful 4, then that's um, another minus 1. So it would go uh, normal defense, minus 1 on that second attack, minus 2 on that third attack. And if you have a, a fourth attack, then you get down to the minus 3. Okay, his second trait is, nope, I've always been Trapster, which gives him plasticity. Uh, traded plasticity is pretty good uh, on this character especially because it's going to play into his special attack power which is things are about to get real messy incapacitate when trapster uses it you may generate a paste marker in each hit target square characters occupying paste markers must break away as if they were adjacent to trapster when no characters occupy a paste marker remove it so let's look at a couple things embedded in there. First of all, he has traded plasticity. So that means if you hit with in-cap, you give out that paste marker, then that character has to break away from Trapster's plasticity. The other thing to notice is there's no limit on the paste markers he can give out. So if you hit with in-cap and uh, multi-target, you can give multiple characters paste markers. Uh, he does have willpower, so then the next turn you could hit some other characters and give them paste markers. And if they have a, if they can't break away from that plasticity, they could be stuck in place uh, for multiple turns or for the whole game. So this common character has the ability to just stop your opponent in their tracks. Now it is just a breakaway that they have to do, so it's not something like immobile. Uh, so. They could still be moved through things like telekinesis, uh, could still carry them out of the paste markers, and they can still attack uh, even though they're in those paste markers. But they, if they want to move on their own, they would have to break away. Okay, let's take a look at the back of his card. All right, you'll notice he starts at 75 points. He has the Minions of Doom team ability, which gives him when this character KOs a standard opposing character after resolutions, heal one click on a friendly character using this team ability. Uh, so Minions of Doom, you don't have to heal another friendly character. You could heal yourself. So you can heal anybody that has Minions of Doom if you KO an opposing character. He has a six range triple target, which plays well with the special in cap as you can see he has that special attack power throughout his dial and you're getting six clicks for that 75 points he's starting with run and shot with a 12 attack which is superb and willpower uh, the two damage i don't mind the low damage values because we're going to be using them as an in cap and to paste up your opponent uh, so with that nine movement that is uh, he can run in shot for five plus the six range, so he has an effective reach of 11 with three targets. Uh, so you can pretty easily tie up uh, a whole opponent's team. Three targets the first turn, willpower, you attack, attack on the next turn, and tie up three more with that in cap. 
his attack value drops down to an 11 on clicks 2 and 3, then a 10, and then ends with a 9. He has run and shot for the first three clicks, moving into sidestep, so he has move abilities throughout his dial. His willpower goes away on click three, uh, but he does pick up perplex on the last floor, four clicks. So you can use that to bump up his attack value and keep using him for, as an in cap. Uh, or you can perplex up your teammates so he can tie people up, perplex up the other attackers, and they can get in there and do some damage. Uh, all in all, I really like his trait. We're going to take a look at how it plays out on the battlefield and he works well on a fan, uh, Frightful Four team. Okay, let's take a look at what Trapster can do on the battlefield. So in this setup, we have three characters there across the map from him that all have zero range. So that would be ideal. Trapster is starting with run and shot with a movement of nine, uh, six range, and triple target. He's going to try to do his in-cap, and then remember, when he uses it, you may generate a paste marker in each hit target square. Then those characters occupying paste markers must break away as if they were adjacent to Trapster. Uh, and Trapster has traded plasticity, so they have to break away from Trapster's plasticity. On no range characters like this, that means he could lock them down. He's starting with that 12 attack, which is... Uh, above average attack value, especially on a 75 point character. So in this type of setup, he could run and shot. And now he doesn't fly, so he'd have to be aware of this water and the hindering terrain. But he could go one, two, three, four, and take his shot from there. And six range, one, two, three, four, five, six. He could triple target all three of these characters shoot him with a 12. If he hit them, they would get uh, special markers to designate that it's paste. Uh, so whatever you use for that, some people use just an actual special, or you could use a smoke cloud or whatever you and your opponent agree to. But that marker then would go underneath the hit characters. And if they want to try to charge in to counterattack, now they have to break away from that. Uh, he starts with willpower, so that means he could in-cap them, give them a token this turn, then next turn in-cap them again uh, and double token them up. Or he could just get them in place there. At 75 points, he's going to have teammates then that can do their follow-up attacks, keeping these guys locked down and working through them uh, one at a time, uh, just taking them off the board. So that's a pretty cool trapster then. He could uh, do this multiple times, not just to these three characters, but let's take a look at how else it could play out. Okay, let's take one more look at how you can use Trapster here uh, against the whole team. So in this type of setup, we have all the opponents over on this side of the map. We have Trapster here. As you can see, it's coming in waves. So we kind of have the first wave of attackers, the second wave are out here. The second wave, they can't reach Trapster right now, so he's, he's relatively safe from the second wave of people. But this first line is closing in. They could reach him next turn and charge in and get him. So with his six range triple target in cap with the paste markers, from right here, he can target all three of these characters. Uh, take the shot with a 12 attack and hopefully hit so that then they would get paste markers, which means now... They would have to break away if they want to try to move in on him next turn. Okay, with their ranges, uh, he could, he would still be safe from Belladonna, but this one could reach him. So if he wanted to, he could run and shot behind to give him a little boost in that defense. Uh, but if he hits them, they're going to be stuck there. Next turn, then he could run and shot again. Go in one, two, three, four. From this hindering, one, two, three, four, five, six, he could then target the second wave. So these three would already have their paste markers, paste markers. Uh, since he has willpower, then second turn, he can run up, 
target these three and get them pace markers. So that could uh, really lock down your opponent's team. That paste marker stays there until it's no longer occupied by the opposing character. So it kind of forces them to break away or figure out some other way to get out of that paste. Check it out. If you dig what we do, go ahead and like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.